So getting back, really back to the basics, ground zero, how do we, how do we learn the alphabet? Well, if you've got a visual spatial thinker, right? What's the best way to learn the alphabet? Abstract on a board or in a book, or to actually break out the clay and start making those letters out of clay. Making them out of clay. Building that alphabet piece by piece and seeing that, you know, if I put that clay this way, it's an A. But if I turn it around the other way and I hold it in my hand, it's not an A anymore. It's a blue. Does that make sense? So, so they get a visual, spatial, tactile experience of the alphabet being a very specific way. And this is a B, and then, oh, oh now it's, it's not a B anymore. It's a D. And the thing is, the way we know those letters are different <coughs> is not the way they look. It's the way they feel. It's, it's the feeling. That's how we know those letters are different. Because remember, in our brains, we actually see the whole world upside down. Right? Everybody knows that, right? Our eyes are like a camera lens. And they actually... There's a big eyeball. Right? Here's a lens. Right? So we see uh, a tree... Right? We, we look at a tree, that tree comes in, and on the back of our eyeball, it looks like this. It's upside down, and we flip it over. In fact, they've even done some experiments um, where um, if you put on prism glasses after, I want to say three days, but maybe it was three weeks. That seems long. I think it was three days. After three days, you know what your brain does? It flips it back over. So you're seeing normal again. So then when you take them off, is everything upside down? Everything's upside down for three days. <laughs> nice. Yes. Yes. And then after three days, it flips it back right. But And that's why some kids can get corrective lenses. Um, if you see them reading, and every time they read, they tilt their head to one side and they want to read like this, mm -hmm. they want to read across like this. Um, if you see them pushing one eye up like this to read, um, if they lose their place an awful lot, if you do like a, a lazy eight, or you just watch their eyes, I, I usually do this with every kid, right? If they can't follow your finger without jumping um, or going back and forth without jumping their eyes like that, there's there's a good chance there's something wrong there. Okay? Um, not a lot of the times, it's going to be the minority of the time, most of the time the eye tracking is going to be a developmental thing. It's, it's, it's probably going to get fixed with some cross crawls and other midline exercises and, and lazy aches and things. Um, but occasionally, you know, like one out of ten, it's going to be a legitimate um, neurological or motor problem that will have to be dealt with with some kind of corrective lenses or exercise or something like that. Qu question? Oh, um, I learned something that helps eye skipping. If you want, I'll share it with you. Yeah, okay. yeah. Bring it on. Okay. What, now or later? Now. Okay. <laughs> now, come on. <laughs> I, learned, I learned this in the community. Faster, faster. <laughs> track the, the kids and they, they skip. Mm -hmm. They're stressed in a certain part of the brain because wherever your eyes look you're accessing different parts of your brain so they're stressed right there and they skip over it. Mm -hmm. And the way to help them is um, in the kinesiology there's different finger modes for different parts of your brain so with your ring fingers your emotions and right here is, is um, another kinesiology point I can mm -hmm. look up the name of it later. Anyway, if they put their fingers like this, and they hold it, there's two bumps here. Mm -hmm. What do you call them? Eminences, right there. Okay, and then you, you move the finger while they're doing this, and you rotate your eyes. If you do that, you can get rid of this, this skipping. This mm -hmm. has a way of releasing whatever glitch yeah. in, their, in their area. <laughs> 
can make, get the technical explanation later. It probably just confuses us. <laughs> yeah, and no, I, really, I, I it does, it does probably work. wasn't going to go into all that um, <laughs> releasing emo that kind of emotional trauma and stress. Um, because that's that there's a whole nother level of stuff that needs to go along with that, but to really understand it and master it and use it effectively and not blindly. But but I do like that. I, I, I thanks for bringing that here. But it's real um, simple, and if I get the technical names for you, if a parent wanted to know, you know, what are you doing, I can. Mm -hmm. So you hold the position and you go around. Yeah, you just the child holds that position. Mm -hmm. And then you move your fingers around, and they keep tracking until they don't skip anymore. Very good. Now, if the Very child good. can't do this, then you can have them sit in their lap like this, and you can have another parent hold this, and another parent do the tracking. So mm -hmm. they keep their hands up. Does that help relieve some of the stress? Like, if they stop skipping, does that mean the stress is kind of relieved at that yeah, point? Yeah, this has a way of releasing the, the stress in the, in the area where they're skipping. Okay. There's a... Very good, There's very good. chapter in kinesiology on that one. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, getting back to the alphabet. Um, basically, what's in here is taking them through, first, I usually use a very simple, like, block font and have them make those letters out of clay. Um, we also have an alphabet. And, and for young kids, we may do half the alphabet at a time or a third of the alphabet at a time. Um, and then move up to, you know, as, because remember, a lot of this stuff is happening in all in a swirl. So we don't we don't do focusing exercises for three weeks and then move into the alphabet. We'll it, it'll all be working together. So as they're building their focus and as they're building their attention and and as we're doing stress reduction, we might start out just doing a part of the alphabet first, um, and and then we'll do something fun which is we play what's called we call the alphabet game and the coach could be you could be a parent could be whoever calls out a letter and their job is to give you the letters on either side of it before and after as fast as they can and you just put the alphabet there it's right there so they can oh, look, so at they look at it there's no it. failure there's no stress it's just a game it's just a game so you know you say b okay a c you know Go ahead and make it the letter. C. B D. Go ahead. E. S U. R. Q S. M. M uh, uh, M O. Okay. <laughs> so so that's what you get to. And then eventually you get actually to where with a little practice and fun, you get to where you can just they can see it. Z Y X W V U T S R Q P O N M L K. So, like with the older kid, you would just go ahead and start out with that game. I mean, from, I mean, with the full alphabet. I'm, we're... It depends. Even if it's an older, I have a guy who's in his fifties. Okay, we had to just spend a fair amount of time on the alphabet right. because his eyes were, they didn't know the difference between this, this, right. and this. Right. So, so we, we spent a considerable amount of time, even at 53, I said, listen, I know this is going to seem silly, but you're, you're, here's, here's one way you know this is, this is really critical. You take a word, like, um, where's my favorite one I like to start with? Success, or a simple, you take a simple word, and you'll see, it'll, it'll be like this. Okay. So spell the red, spell the blue. S U C C S S. S U C C S. I'm just speeding it up so to, to get along here. Um, spell the red, spell the blue, spell the red, spell the blue. All right, now he's looked at it. S U C C E S S. S U C C E S S. All right, now close your eyes and spell the red. S E S. What? S U C C S S. S U C. And he's even trying to memorize it, okay? I say, okay, now, now close your eyes and. Read it off your picture. Read it off your, your picture. And just, he'll go, all right, S-U-S-E, S-U-C, what? Look, look at it again. Okay. S-U-C-E-S, okay? He's not, he, he, the letters don't disappear that quick. Right. Okay? I mean, you can almost like, you can stare at this card for a couple of seconds, close your eyes, and you can almost see the letters right there. Right. 
So if they're disappearing that quick, there's no map in here. There's no map of those letters. So that tells you right off the bat, right there, that if they disappear that quickly, that they need some serious time to build visually, spatially. They have to build that alphabet piece by piece, step by step, to get, to put it in their so brain. Did you start with the clay thing with him? Did you go all the way back to the okay? All the way back to the clay. Okay. Yep. And sometimes, you know, I start here, and it's right. like, oh, oh, you know what? We're not successful. You know what? Let's let's go to here first. Let's. This is going to be easier. Yeah. A um, couple examples. You can see. Um, notice the first one. Now I'm going to give you a clue before you as you look at that. To cross, to make a diagonal line, you have to cross the midline. Okay. You have to cross. You have to track across the midline to make a diagonal line. Can you see anything interesting in that first, in the first one? No diagonal. You see, you look at the X and the the N and uh, some of the other ones. They they go up and around. They they're they're very. This few. looks like my son's. This is how and, he would have done it. Really? Oh, okay. yeah. So that that. It's about how his writing is. That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, and you can see in a couple of these how they got better, um, obviously. <laughs> so, in other words, uh, also looking at the pictures, you notice I don't focus on everything having to be exact, especially the first time or two. It's almost like I want to just see what they're going to do. I want to step back and see right. what they're going to do. Different sizes, maybe they'll go from big to small or small to big or, or you know, just random. The first time I like to just watch and see. Um, one of the things that was really embarrassed, in fact, it was this girl. And she kept making her ends like this. Mm. And I'm like, okay, let's try to make it like this, right? Let's make our end like this, right? And she kept going, <laughs> right? And, 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 and at the end of the session, I was writing my notes, right? And I looked at, and looked at my paper, and all my ends were like this. <laughs> I guess I better lighten up on her. Where, I think, where's her? Well, she did a capital N there. But anyway, it was it was it was funny. It was really funny. I was like, oh, ouch. All right. I guess I still need some work on my handwriting. Um, so once we've got our alphabet, you can see it. You can see that S is before T. And after R, and you can see you can you have the letters in your head now, even if it's not perfect. I mean, I've had some kids that were coming from from miles and miles away, and and I, I knew I had I had four hours to work with them. That was it. That was going to be our thing. Um, so we really focused, and literally in four hours, I took them to being able to just Z Y X W V U T S R Q P. I mean, just like that. Very cool. Um, was one of the, let me go back to the thank yous, who was it? I remember, she was a little gal, she always carried a teddy bear. Yeah, this one. They came from Monterey. And, um, just a little bit of practice and her spelling went to 100%. A little bit later, her reading was up. I mean, it was always awesome. Okay, so the next step is, um, We've, we're getting our map of the alphabet, right? We're getting it. We can see those letters in our head one by one or two together or three, one, two, three. The next step is we're going to get rid of this sequential requirement for seeing words. And we're going to learn to process words as pictures. So looking at a word is just like looking at our house or the car or a dog or an airplane. We're just going to see it as a picture. We're not going to see separate letters. We're going to see maybe two parts tops. We're going to see S U C, and then we're going to see C E S S. So we're going to put that together, and it becomes a picture, an image, right? And everybody knows that you can uh, well, except with graphics program, you know, if you have Word, you can move letters around and rearrange them easily. 
but you make a picture out of it, you print it out as a PDF or something, now you can't change them anymore. They're stuck. So that's what we want to do. We want them stuck together. So he sees success. The. Here. There. Were. Which, by the way, you can't spell phonetically. Anyway. I mean, simple words like, I mean, think about it. The English language is very complicated. Yeah. Think about that. And all those rules they teach you in school are lies. The I before E except after C. Except for, you know, all these exceptional words that don't follow the rule. And all that. It's just wrong. It's look at all. this. <laughs> yeah, look at this. Uh. Ear. Air. Er. And that's not even getting into uh, through, cough, although, and rough. I mean, look at those. Very Try to spell those phonetically. So let's throw it out. Let's 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 throw out that nonsense. We'll get rid of this limitation. So so there's two schools of thought here. One of the schools of thought is look, your child. We have the test results. See, your child is weak in sequential processing. They're weak in auditory processing. In fact, he may he may even have an auditory processing disorder. He may have an order. I said I had parents sitting here. They, their child had. He was diagnosed. It was right there. AD, auditory processing disorder. I said, well, how did they arrive at that? Well, he can't follow instructions. <laughs> really, he can't follow instructions. Okay. Um, just let me just mark that down for now. It happened. It was a Saturday. Lisa was somewhere, and the kids were here. So while I was talking with the parents, this little guy, seven years old or whatever, he was just running around with my kids in the back. They were just running around having a ball. I said, really, auditory processing disorder. He can't follow instructions, really. No, nope, no, nope, can't happen. I said, okay, let me try something. I called him over. I said, um, I don't know, John, whatever. Uh, John, um, put my hand on his shoulder, right? I looked him in the eye. I said, we're gonna, you and I are going to start in about five minutes here. Can you do me a favor? Got his permission. Yeah, I can do so. Could you bring me um, over there, there's somewhere there's a red ball of yarn, a big red ball of yarn, and three juggling balls, the, the, the lemony things. And I said, can you do me a favor? Can you bring me the red ball of yarn and the three juggling balls? Okay. I said, thanks. You can go do that. And his mom's sitting there like, not going to happen. Sorry. I mean, I hate to disappoint you. You seem like a nice guy, but it's not going to happen. And about a minute and a half later, what, what, I got to confess, even I was nervous because I heard him start running around with the kid. <laughs> I was like, oh, dang it. Okay, maybe it's not going to happen. But about, about a minute later, a minute and a half later, here he comes walking up, red yarn and three juggling balls. And she's like, <laughs> she even said I would have lost the mortgage on that one I, I, would have, I would have bet you the monthly mortgage payment that that wouldn't have happened now what I don't understand is they still didn't sign up I don't, I don't get it I mean I, I, he, couldn't, he couldn't listen and I and and, and it, I mean maybe I maybe I made it look too easy. I don't I right, don't know. They probably thought they could just go home and do There's that. Your, and be fine. He's fine. I, There's I, nothing I, wrong I with I him. said okay. I said <laughs> you know yeah he's got a different style. And but I showed I, I he brought that in. Um, he couldn't spell or read well at grade you know near grade level. So I did the success spelling forwards and backwards. And I said yeah give us some time and we can we can so get see, this. So see you showed them that he could do these things and so they decided the school probably is the problem and their kid's fine and he doesn't have any problems and which is kind of true but you know it's <laughs> yeah yeah that's probably what happened. Um, there there is that kind of mentality mm -hmm. and um, and Claudia Lowe is going to be speaking tonight and I love Claudia I I worship and respect what she does. Um, I also have yet to have a single client of hers. I've had maybe three or four, um, actually finish a program. Um, they, it seems like once they get caught up suing the school district and they, wanna, they want the school to fix the problem, they, I don't know, I don't know. They didn't, they, did, they weren't interested in like doing the work themselves or right. something. The mentality is it's the school's responsibility, not mine. Right. Yeah. It's like, it's like it's an entitlement. And, um, and you know, I mean, I, like I said, I've had people vehemently disagree with me on this um, when I say, look, you know, I don't think school's the best place for an ADD kid. I, I mean, it's not, it's never going to be our favorite place. It's never going to be our favorite environment. 
Um, does that mean you should pull all the AD kids out of school? No, no. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't mean yeah. that. What I mean is it's, it's probably never going to be our, our cup of tea. Yeah. Now, you get into graduate school or thereabouts, you know, where you get to pick your classes. You can tell your well, professor to go, yeah. you know, yeah. talk to yourself for three hours. I'm going to go play and I'll, I'll read it in a book or whatever. You know, when you have that kind of control, now it's, it's getting to be a lot different. Um, especially if you have acquired some study skills that work with your learning style. Well, and I think also there's it's a matter of finding what methods work for your child. Right. Because yeah. there are different philosophies out there. Right. There are some kids that if they can do an online homeschooling thing, will get their entire school, and they're like, I can get my entire school day done in two hours. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so right. right. Yeah. And yeah. they will sit down and get it done every day and, and right. get into their routine, and it will totally work for them, and they'll right. learn until they get to the point where, mm -hmm. I knew of one kid that just wasn't making it, and then he did what, Lucas did what, four years of high school in like a year and a half? Yeah. Yeah. Years. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you couldn't get him to do his homework with a stick and a crowbar. Right. And he, and he does three years of high or four years of high school in like less than three years because it was like he was in control he was in charge mm -hmm. now my son maybe this year he's a little bit different I've seen him mature over the summer and he's he's in a he's going to a, a private school spending lots of money and it's gonna be really really demanding but I can tell you honestly up until this year if he had if he had you know, 300 hours of school to complete, he would wait until, Yeah. if he could, if he could, he would the wait till hour. two weeks and then just not sleep for two weeks. He would, <laughs> yeah. That would be his philosophy. <laughs> I'll just do it in two weeks. <laughs> so these sight words, is this a verbal thing you do with them or? Is so, a... back to this, back to yeah. this. See, you can keep me on track. Yeah. So here's what I, here's what I typically do. Um, and, and they're not included in, in this pack, but, but I will often start with other words, like words that are very familiar to the child. Visual words like car, boat, toy. Things you have a picture in your head of. You, things that you can naturally picture. But I, I, I know that those are not a problem for the guys. So, so when Linwood Bell gives them this packet of words, which is the thousand most common words in the English language, and they say you, start, you need to start studying all of these. For me, that's kind of a waste of time because most of those words the child, if they're a visual learner, they don't have a problem with. Right. See, they can visualize cat. They can see the word cat and they visualize cat. Now, does it help to go over those words maybe once or twice to learn the spelling in, in that? Yes, over the course of time, yes, I think that's valuable. But the words that are really going to be a problem for this group are the participles, articles, conjunctions, coordinating conjunctions, prep, did I say prepositions, pronouns. Okay, how do you make a Those picture? How do you make a picture out of also, yours, gone, does, stood? Let's let. So, so those are the ones that when they're reading, your, your typical visual child, they're reading along and they, you know, the dog came to the hydrant, whatever. Okay? And they'll ignore the, the first the. They'll get a picture of dog and maybe came or ran and they can see the dog running. And then, but then they get to the and if they if they don't skip over it which is a strategy that they develop if they really look at the two and the the their their movie their movie goes blank right. so now they have a picture of a dog and maybe a picture of a hydrant but they really don't know what happened in between unless they make it up does that make sense mm -hmm. so what we want to do is we want them to have a nice smooth movie and the way we do that we fill it we help to um, we're going to train them to start, see the word, and make a picture. See the word, make a picture. See the word, make a picture. Um, particularly with these sight words. And there's about 220 of them um, that are pretty common on, on this list. And 
And the easiest way we do it is to take something that's going to be interesting or fun, something to hold the kids' attention, some a mythical creature, something they enjoy doing. It doesn't really matter because we're going to use it over and over again in this case. Um, it's not like a vocabulary word where the content is really important. We're not interested in the content. We're interested in the process. To see this word as a thing and make a picture, right? See the word, make a picture. See the word, make a picture. See the word, make a picture. Um, so, so let's say for left, okay? Um, I left my motorcycle in the pool. Try to make them fun. Try to make fun. I left my motorcycle in the pool. I'll hold it up to his left. L E F T. L E F T. Okay? And as I, I close your eyes and I say the sense, I left my motorcycle in the pool. Spell left. L E F T. L E F T. And backwards T F T L F T L E F. Or no, T F L E. There you go. T F E F. Yes. There we go. Um, see, you got to get them to slow down. That's the biggest thing. Yeah. Um, so you hold it up by the left rough. side? That makes yes. a difference? It's so if you go back to the eye patterns, and this is going to be true for 97% of the kids you work with, they will be, let's go back to, all the way back to the strategies on page 27. So put a marker on page 56. This way, the way you're looking at this is you're looking at the child face to face. So up to their left, your right, is what we would call visual recall. Okay? Up to their up to their right, your left, is visual construct. This is where you make up an image, make up a story. Okay? Uh, there's a myth that says, you know, if you ask a child a question and they look up to the right, they're lying. Right. Yeah, it's, yeah. It might be true, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't take that by itself. Um, what I do tell parents is that if you give your child an instructions to go and take out the trash, okay, if they look up, either to the left or right, they're probably making a picture of what you just said. If they look down to the left or right, they are probably analyzing what you just said and deciding whether it needs to happen or not. They're evaluating. Does that make sense? Like making the big picture of if I take it out, is it going to affect my life? Yeah, so you, you'll see that. Watch it. The... Okay, oh, take out the garbage. Hmm, is she serious? Is it, what is that? Oh, well, boy. she asked me five more times before she really gets mad. <laughs> right, right. So... So 97% um, of the time, it's, you're going to notice that they look up to the left um, to get the picture. Um, there's a couple of things I do, with, which we'll get into later, about identifying whether they're reverse organized or not. But, but not, not now. That's, that's going to come later. Um, so, so basically, we want to get them to go through this list, you know, couple of times, this 220 words, very fast, you know, 20, 30 seconds per word. And, um, and now we have established a new pattern for reading. Rather than sounding out into the... Guard in. Okay? Guess what the way our kids are gonna read with a little practice. Into the garden. And I have a little program I run on my machine. He's, 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 he, he's, he's run it a couple times. Um, and I and I don't have it available yet. It's it's not available for production, but I'm I'm soon, I promise. I promise. <laughs> And what, all it does is it just flashes words on the screen, mm -hmm. okay? And I can get it to where these a young guy, um, six, seven years old, that supposedly can't read well, they're actually seeing the words. Not I'm not saying they're actually reading and recognizing 
like as they would for a story, but they're seeing the words at about 400 words a minute. And, and they can follow along and recognize 400 words a minute. That's pretty cool stuff for a kid who supposedly can't read. Now, that's how fast, that just gives you an example of how fast the eyes can move and how fast the brain can see a word flash on the screen for a tenth of a second or a twentieth of a second, a fraction of a second, and actually know what that word means. Way faster than they can sound it out. Way faster. So, this is the really cool thing. You teach a kid to read visually, he doesn't just go from like, 90 to 100 or 120 words a minute or maybe you know you got to get them to the benchmark 60 to 90 words a minute as his vocabulary grows which is a critical component to increasing reading speed as his vocabulary grows he's going to wind up reading it two three four hundred words a minute because it's so fast i mean just seeing a word it takes about a 20th of a second to see that word, recognize it, and know the meaning of it. Whereas sounding words out auditorily, the best you can do on a good day is about four, three to four words per second. That's it. And that's why most adults to this day, most adults fully grown will still only read at 180 to 200, 220 words a minute. That's it. They read about as fast as they talk, maybe a little faster. But the guys who don't read this way, the way they were taught, right, who start to read visually, nat you know, probably naturally, or they took a course, uh, Evelyn Wood or something like that, and they start reading visually, so they see the word, see the word, see the word. They can read two, three, four, five hundred words a minute. The record is still Mike. <laughs> He hit 1,200 words a minute, and there was another guy who, I haven't seen him all summer, but he was really close. He was at 1,100 plus when I left him uh, last at the end of last school year. So do you keep, like, you start with these words, and then you keep building it the same way with, like, you, all the words in the English language, more or less? I well, mean, where do you go with that? Well, and, what happens is, what happens is you do these words, because these are the tricky ones in the beginning. You want to get these out of the way. And then, depending upon the age of the child, they're either going to be getting 20 spelling words a week, okay, or they're going to have um, science, history, and language arts vocabulary. vocabulary words. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you see how we, we take this basic strategy, and now we start milking it and using it in slightly different ways so that they can do um, their science homework, their history, they learn to read and take visual notes or listen and take notes. You all using sight keywords, keywords that they're gonna see the word, make a picture, see the word, make a picture. And later on when, they're, when they have to take tests, the test is gonna take one of two forms. It's either gonna be a question which has a keyword and then the answers are all definitions, or the question is going to be a definition and the answers will be keywords. It's going to be one or the other, or they have to match the keyword with the definitions. But either way, in any case, if you make a picture of the keyword the way you learned it, tectonic plates. Oh, yeah. There's the definition. Boop, right there. Or, let's see. Plates on the Earth's surf surface, big plates that are crashing into each other and moving around. I make the picture, oh, tectonic plates. Boink. See, if you have the definition, you make a picture of the definition, the key word comes to you. Boom. If you make a picture of the key word, then the definition comes to you. Works either way. But the words will never match up. It's one of the reasons I give kids that they want to study like this. The words will never ever match unless you you know unless your question is who's who's buried in Grant's tomb you know Abraham Lincoln George Washington General Grant 
Okay, but you know who was the George they Washington do Bridge named after? Questions like that on stupid, what? on like star testing and stuff. They do have stupid questions well, like that. Well, one or two, but, but that's not where the problem yeah. is. The problem is usually because the words never match exactly. The words in the question never match the words in the answer. So when you know, again, when you have this as your input, and then you have just this on the test, right? So this is what gets stored, and this is what you have to compare it to. You don't get that synesthesia. But if I take this, and I make a picture out of it, and I take this, I read the question, and I make a picture out of it, oh, look at this, apples to apples, ooh, I get the synesthesia, I get the feeling, it's right. Very good, very good. So, so we'll, like, just, we start off with relaxed and focused, we get our pictures, we get it to hold them steady for five seconds, we start with our reading, our sight words, right? We're building up this strategy, building up this strategy. See the word, make a picture. See the word, make a picture. Now, we get through our spelling words in the third, fourth, and fifth grade. We get up to the sixth, fifth, and sixth, and seventh grade where we have to study science and biology and earth science and, and uh, uh, history. Um, so now, we do, this, we, we do the same basic process. Um, and, and here's the cool part. In most textbooks, all, all the way up through high school anyway, you notice that the key words are highlighted in bold? Mm. You don't even have to figure out what to study. It's right there. In fact, in fact, I often tell my guys, look, look for the bold. Yeah. before yeah. you even read the book, before you even read the chapter, yeah. just make out what I, I call your cheat sheet, your study sheet. I say write down your key words. So, so or if you can, if they have this read a paragraph or a passage and, and answer questions, read the questions first, but, but, and most kids, they, they'll stop doing that because they try that a couple of times, and they, they're trying to memorize the question, and then read with, you know. Just the question and mind and nothing else. So they go back and forth, they'll read the question and, and then try to find it, and read the next question, try to find it. It doesn't save them any time. It, in any, if anything, it's probably worse. No. Read the question, but pull out just the key words. So the questions, blah, 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 acorns, blah, 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 Indians, blah, 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 grinding rocks. Okay, acorns, Indians, grinding rocks. Okay, I, I don't even know what grinding rocks are. I just grinding two rocks together. That's all I need. I just need a picture to get me going. So now I'm going to go back to reading, because I have a question about Indians, acorns, and grinding rocks. So now I go back, blah, 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 Indians, oh, and then America, and, 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 and they're eating, oh, they're eating acorns, they're eating acorns, but they, they put them on grinding rocks, oh, they grind the acorns on the rock, in the rock, oh, okay, so now, boom, now it comes together. And rather than have to memorize everything in that, all the nonsense and all the filler and all the other stuff in that story, those three things jump out at me. See, because my brain is already looking for something about Indians and something about acorns and something about grinding rock. So by writing down the key words or memorizing or making a note of mental note of the key words before I even read the passage, I've created a little context, like uh, uh, an outline, if you will. Um, oddly enough, when we go to write, we'll do the same thing in reverse. We'll create an outline and then, and then write our story. All right, so what are we at? 2.30, everybody's starting to go. They know. Okay, um, so I do have the list of sight words, and um, you know, I, I, make, I just make these packages up like this. Um, There's a couple of exercises in here. I think they're pretty self-explanatory. Um, you know, basically what we do is we go to where the child is. Um, start by reading one line or one phrase or one sentence. It doesn't matter. There's no right here. There's no should be, okay? If he can read three words and make a picture, that's good. 
in the car. Got it. Driving down the road. Okay. We saw a bird. Cool. So does that make sense? There's nothing, if that's where we're at, that's where we're at. Now, if we get to where we can read that whole sentence and, and make a picture and see it, good. And, and after practicing that, then we go to maybe half a paragraph. And then we go to a whole paragraph. But a great exercise that, is that, we, that we do, it takes about, um, it's kind of like a warm-up, like warming up for a baseball game or something. You just start, every time you sit down to read, and um, I've never seen anyone have to do this for more than like four or five weeks, every day, every day for four, about four or five weeks. Um, you read a sentence and then look up to the left, make a picture. Read a sentence, look up, read a sentence, look up. And you do that for three minutes. And then for about five minutes, you read a paragraph, look up, read a paragraph, look up, read a paragraph, look up. For five minutes. Now you're reading the same paragraph that you just read the individual No, sentence. no, 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 you're, you're just moving, moving on. along. You're just okay. going along. Sentence, 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 then paragraph, 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 then page, stop, look up. For me, to this day, I, I do that. I don't read usually more than a page without pausing and taking that five seconds to get my picture. Because it, it, it guarantees me that I'm not wasting my time. I do not want to read more than once. I want to read it once and be done with it. If I see something really important, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna make a picture of that key point, that key word, that key concept, and I'm gonna write it down. Um, anyway, we'll talk more about that. But this basic reading exercise is is a really great way, and then practicing reading, um, of course, visual reading. Always, 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 we want to start training our guys to do something first warm up when they whenever they're going to sit down to learn or read or take a test train get you want to train them you want to get them into that habit whenever they go off to school they do two minutes of exercise whenever they sit down to homework they do two minutes of exercises um, when they sit down to take a test they focus in for 30 seconds or a minute does that make sense and let that become a daily habit every time um, and um, yeah so so after a while, whenever they sit down to read or learn, boom, they're gonna they're gonna be in that right place. They're gonna, or they're gonna know that they're not. They're gonna, oh man, I don't. Okay, hold on, this doesn't feel right. Right. All right, now I'm ready. Bring it on. So, let's take a break. 15, 20 minutes or something. And then we'll talk about study notes.